single cell and say file new project so here's our new project and once we get into our new project here's where we're going to write our program here is where we are going to record our points and here is where we get all of our commands um, if you notice we've got a bunch of commands that we can access here um, generally I like to tell students you want to be in professional mode so click on the pro button and you'll notice you get a lot more commands to choose from and we will be using quite a few of these commands throughout so you want to make sure that you're in pro mode um, also this is just the program and the commands there is no cell here so the next step was if you remember to import the 3d model so we have to click on file go to import 3d model and choose go back to our desktop and find the 3d model that we just built and we said we saved it in folder a there it is and then we'll import it so there's our cell and it kind of takes up a lot of space it's unwieldy and the program does some weird stuff for instance if we just start moving these things around or we accidentally close a, a window you know how do we how do we get this back the way we want it's very easy we can go to window and say teach and edit and we'll see just these windows and oops where'd, where'd my where'd my cell go if we go to simulation and teach it brings that to the forefront and we can work on it from here so why don't we do this why don't we work on it this way so the next step in the sequence of things that we need to do we've made our cell we've imported it into robo cell now we have to teach it the positions and the way we're going to do that we're going to name our positions as you see here notice that in this example 99 is a home position and that would be where the robot is right now we could call that home we just record that position as 99 and then we need four more positions we need the pick position and we need the place position it's going to pick it up from here and it's going to place it here but notice that we have two positions directly above the pick and the place and we do that on purpose so that we never slide the block across the table causing friction um, so always come down from 99 to 11 straight down straight up back down to 2 back to 12 and then back to 99 so notice yeah there why are they numbered like this we'll talk about that in a little bit but here's a side view of what it looks like and here's a top view of the pick position and the place position this is the the pick position and the place position so now we're ready to record positions when we record positions recording positions means wherever the robot is it's going to record all of the encoder counts on all of the motors so we physically have to drive our robot around to get it to the positions and then record it when it gets there uh, a bunch of different ways to move it around we can move it around with the manual movement box by opening the gripper closing the gripper and these are all the joints so I can move it by joint joint number one is the joint closest to the base which is the base the rotate and joint number two is going to be the shoulder then the elbow then the wrist five and six I've got rotate and I've got pitch I can move the pitch of my gripper as well so that's by joint and if I want to move in an XYZ fashion I can click on the XYZ button and I can move my joints in the X axis, the Y axis, which is left and right. Remember, X and Y are backwards. And Z is up and down. Another way to move the robot is to go up to the view and say, show me the robot movement. That gives me a picture. And some students like the picture. And it shows the arrows. And it shows you which arrow you click on the arrows and it can move it back and forth you can change the speed it also gives you the XYZ as well both of those work well but something that works even better in simulation you have these three objects you do not have these buttons on the robot itself but you do when you have a simulation running so for instance I can send a robot to an object if I click on that button I can point at the object I want to send it to and boom it goes right to it I can then say 
send the robot above a point and I can click on my block and it will send it above and so these three icons are very powerful and allows us to do this really really quickly so I'm gonna set my windows back to the way I had it with simulation and teach I'm gonna reset my work cell with that icon right there that icon resets my work cell so the next step is to record positions so to record the positions we can record them in any order that we want and I'm going to start by recording number 99 because my robot's already there. So if I type the number 99 into the position number, I can hit the record button and it will record where all those encoders, where all those motors are right now. And it's all set. So now all I want to do is run it to all my other points, my 1, 11, 12, and 2. They don't have to be done in that order and record all the encoder counts for all the different motors. So let's do that. My gripper's open, so I don't run into anything. And I'm gonna say send it to the object. And that's the pick position, so that's position number one. So I'm gonna come over here to my teach box, and I'm gonna say number one, and say record. I'm now going to close my gripper and say, hey, you know what? Why don't we send it to a point above? And I clicked right on the top of the box and it sent it straight up. That's position that we want that to be position number 11. So we're going to type in 11 and say record. The next thing we want to do is move it back to position number 12. And position number 12 is back, remember, in the X. So I'm going to use my manual movement for this and I'm going to move it back to about there. There's no specific position for this. And we're going to call this position number 12. Record it. And now I got to get the position on the table right below where the block is. A couple different ways to do this. One way to do it is to just drive it in the z-axis down to the table until you get an, an error message. That means, oops, I've just ran into the table. Um, you say, okay, and now that's your position. So we, we got an error message, but it's okay. There's our position, and that's position number two. So we're going to say position number two and record. I can open my gripper now, and I should be able to try and go to all my positions. So if, if I'm at two now, I can go to 12 and say go to and I should be able to go to all of my positions and I should be able to do this without further ado and if I go to 99 99 should return my robot uh, back to its, its home position so now I've basically recorded and you can move your cell around at any time I've, gotten, I've taught all my points I'm now ready to go ahead and write my program Writing my program is very easy in RoboCell 2. Um, you're really not writing a program as you're not typing it, but you're choosing different commands. So I've already made my cell. I'm going to expand my workspace box so that I can get at the commands that I want. Notice that there are letters. These letters are also uh, shortcuts to get all of these different commands. And most of the ones that I need for the first couple activities are icons right above here, like open gripper, close gripper, um, go to position, go linear to position, go circular to position. These are just icons. They do the same thing as these shortcuts and they do the same thing as if you clicked on these. So the first thing I want to do is add a couple remarks. Um, I'm going to put in a remark and remark is RE. The shortcut is RE and that allows me to just put some text. And I tell my students that I want to see their name uh, as the first remark. And then the next line, the name of the program. Oops. Oh, I made a mistake. So how do I fix that? I can double click on that and now I can throw my text in there if, they, if you close it on too early. So the text that I want here is the name of the program. This is A. Pick and place. And the next remark is today's date, which is 3-14-2016. And I'm ready to write my program. So. I would then have the kids on the board say, all right, what are we going to do now? I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because we're going to look at this and we're going to see that we have these positions that we want it to go to. 
we want it to go to from 99 to 11 to 1 back to 11 to 12 and to 2 but we want to open and close our grippers at the right time also so with that in mind let's write our program so we're going to use the icons up here instead of these down here you can do whichever you want but I always tell the kids to start by saying go to position 99 in case it's not the robots not there so we're gonna say go to 99 and we're gonna say go fast okay there's go to position 99 fast then we're going to open the gripper and this button down here that I just clicked opens the gripper on the robot this button up here inside the program window gives us the command open gripper which is what we wanted so we've got the gripper open now we're going to go to position number 11 so we're going to say go to position 11 and anytime you're away from the object and away from the table you can move fast so we're going to say fast for this and say okay and then once we get down to near the table uh, position 11 12 1 and 2 we're going to start slowing it down and we're going to move in a linear fashion so we are at 11 with the gripper open now we're going to choose go linear and we're going to go to position number one and we're going to leave that at a speed of 50 percent now that i'm at the pick position i want to make sure that i close my gripper and then i go linear back to don't forget to go back to 11 you don't want to slide it across the table at speed 50 because I'm still near the table now I should be right above the pick position and I'm going to say go linear to position number 12 which will be back leave it at 50% say OK and then go linear to position 2 at 50% where I can then open my gripper don't forget to go back to position number 12 and then I can say go to home fast when I'm all set so that's how you write a program in RoboCell it, it's, it's that simple there really is no typing you have to pick commands and you can pick them from over here too for instance if I forgot a closed gripper command right here I can click on the line below where I want the item inserted and I can come over here and I can see close gripper CG so if I type CG that'll put that right in where I wanted it if I didn't want that there which I don't I can always delete a line of code by clicking on delete the delete button on the keyboard so I can edit my program uh, just as I would any other type of programming and now I'm ready to actually simulate it the last step is once I have my program I've taught my points I've written my program or recorded my points and written my program I'm ready to try it out so I'm gonna to go to the top of my program wherever that blue line is is where it'll start running the program from if I accidentally leave it here it'll start from there so I want to make sure that I start at the top and I'm gonna press this run single cycle button I can run a single line of code I can run a single cycle or I can run it continuously and I'm going to choose to run it single cycle which is right there but before I do that what I want to do uh, make sure I reset my cell I want to turn on my robot path by clicking on this icon here by clicking on this the robot you'll be able to see where the robots moving and it'll leave a trail so let's turn on that and see what happens I'm ready to run my simulation and where the pink line is is where it is in my program and then I can see what it's doing and where it's going and I can move it around there is no fast forward button so it runs it at full speed and then you can see your program so here's my program and here's what it did things to look for with your students make sure that these lines are straight these should be go linear moves so that it goes straight down to the table and straight back up and it doesn't slide or cause friction um, there shouldn't be any lines that cross like this or like this that means they slid it across the table and they didn't go straight up beforehand 
um, that'll cause friction and you'll lose accuracy on that also. So you want to make sure this line is straight, this line is straight, this line is straight. Um, some kids choose to go use go linear for all of their positions and then these aren't curved. That's okay. It doesn't matter. But just remember, um, you want to be in pro mode. If you can't do something you want to do, it's probably because you're in L1 or L2 and you don't have all the commands. Um, those are the basics. So once you're all set, make sure you save and you say file, save your project. Make sure you save it in that folder that you made. I made mine on the desktop in this folder in folder A. I'm going to call this A pick and place. I'll say save. And one thing I want you to notice after you save it, you're going to see that if you go to the desktop and you go to that folder, RoboCell, you go to A, you'll see that it saves a whole bunch of files. This is why the file management piece is so important. Here's my actual cell. Here are the four parts, the four files that actually get saved when I hit the save button. If you delete any of these, move any of these, or rename any of these, your program will never work again. So the file management thing is really, really important too. Congratulations, you've written your first program in RoboCell.